Hey YouTube, it's Lisa. Good to see you guys again. This is probably my fifth take of trying to do this art haul that I got. Um, it's been a long time since I've done one. It's almost been probably a couple of years. And I wanted to go over some of the items that I've bought probably in the last year. <laughs> Truth be told, almost probably at least nine months. It's, it's been since the beginning of this year. I have been on a little tirade of getting things. Um, and I just wanted to dive in today and show you what I got. And I have an unboxing that I started to do that I want to show you for my new art bag because I've been looking for one of those to take with me to coffee shops. That's different than my everyday commuter carry that I would take with me when I go to my regular job. So let's dive in. First of all, we've got paper. I finally invested in Arsha's watercolor paper. Um, I really do like this paper. I haven't done a lot of uh, work on it other than, oops, drop something. I have been swatching on it, or I swatched on it once, and I have one swatching sample of it. I also bought a portfolio book in which I am now keeping my portfolios of various items that I've bought from watercolor pencils to um, oops, watercolors on it. And I think I actually swatched on this one some of the Holbein gouaches that I got from a recent buy. So this also is our portfolio book. I got this on sale at um, Michael's, and right now Michael's has got a huge back to sell, uh, back to school, excuse me, sale going on right now. So if anybody is looking to get canvases or watercolor papers, brushes, this is a really good time to do so. Um, so that's Arches. I also got a small hot press thing of fluid paper. And I've got one of the Stonehenge Aqua Press watercolor paper. Um, I did this one because I'm getting ready to take a botanical class, I think, this fall. And it's highly recommended that you use hot press paper. It comes out really gorgeous. This is a sample of some of the um, watercolors that I've recently got for palette for the watercolor misfit. And so speaking of palettes. I also bought what they call drafting paper, which is like Myanmar paper. This tip came from Wendy Hollander, who uh, is one of the botanical artists that I like to follow on YouTube. This stuff is great. You just basically scratch on your watercolor pencils and then wet that and it acts as a palette, which is great for when you're traveling because you don't have to worry about trying to take something in porcelain. Um, per the watercolor misfit, I did go over to the World Market and I bought just a regular plain porcelain plate. These are really great. This is like one of those appetizer plates. This costs like five or six dollars. It's a great way to actually get porcelain in your life if you can't find a porcelain palette. Um, speaking of palettes in addition, I bought this airtight one. Right now I've got color set up from the Watercolor Misfits course on exploring watercolor and washes. And this is a really great palette too. I'm not a big fan of plastic. This is not my favorite kind. I'd rather have porcelain. But you can scratch it down with uh, sand, really fine grade sandpaper. Or I used a little bit of glue based off of another YouTube video that I watched. And that helped kind of help it beat up properly so it wasn't like just floating all over the place. And lastly, the last palette that I got was this palette that I saw Sharon Cullen use with her gouache. She has a video called Everything That You Need To Know About Gouache. Let me just refocus this in in here. Um, this palette is great because it is airtight. Um, I'll put the links below. This sells on Amazon for like $12 and it is unbelievable at keeping your paints separated. These are all the new gouaches that I got. These are the Holbein gouaches. By the way, this video is not sponsored by anybody. I basically bought all the supplies myself. Um, so any of the views that I have are not being tainted by anybody who gave me anything because I always buy 
my art sponsors, I mean, I have no art sponsors, so I buy everything myself. Um, I recently got, in addition, this um, Stillman & Burn. I'll try to get this in focus. I'm sorry, guys, I have a broken finger, too, so it's not helping. The Stillman & Burn um, Cold Press um, Spiral Notebook. I haven't done a lot with cold press paper before. It's not my favorite, but I'm taking a Skillshare class on letting go and making mistakes and exploring your creativity and um, it I actually decided to use this book for that and actually with the Stillman and Burn um, brand their cold press doesn't really feel as texture oriented as some cold presses so it's kind of smooth actually for it to be a cold press paper so you might want to check it out in addition, I bought some um, new paint brushes. Um, these are for the gouache palette that I just got done showing you. Um, they're a little bit more stiff than the normal ones that I get. They're from Princeton Artists. I'm gonna see if I can get these in focus because this is why I'm reshooting this because all my brushes were out of focus. So let me just do this. There we go. So this is a Princeton round. Um, pretty fine tip watercolor brush so I got a round I got a flat head and again this is again a Princeton watercolor brush this is a one inch flat I got another Princeton I think this one is the yeah Princeton art this is a half inch quarter inch quarter inch flat and then I got another round and this one is an eight round. These are great brushes, and they work really well with gouache. And then I've got another four. This is a Princeton, bring this into focus. This is a Princeton Neptune series one. And this is a four, again, great brush. This is definitely a watercolor brush. These are synthetic, uh, the other ones are synthetic. I'm really enjoying those. And they're, um, like I said, really good with gouache. Um, I bought some more paint. Like all people who get into watercolor, I think I'm addicted to various paints. So let's get this into camera. So these are the colors that are featured in, and I'm sorry to reach behind here, this palette. So this palette has a combination has a combination of various paints. Um, I've got a Cotman yellow. This one is Cadmium Yellow Hue. That's the Cotman brand. I have a Winsor & Newton Olive Green, I think this is, or Green Gold. That's what this one is. I've got the Winsor & Newton Winsor Yellow, I do believe this is. Then I found my first try into Holbein, and I've got the June Brilliance. And that color is really interesting. That is this one in the corner. That color right there in the corner. That's the June Brilliance. Actually comes out kind of peachy. It's really pretty, actually. Um, then I've got another Cotman, and this one is Cadmium Orange, do you believe? And I have Indian Yellow, Professional, Windsor & Newton. I have Holbein. I got the Olive Green and Holbein. I actually like Holbein. This is my first time actually experimenting with Holbein. I like Holbein so much that I went out and bought a whole bunch of um, wash from Holbein um, on Blixel. I've got the blue, so I've got a Horizon Blue. I've got a Windsor Blue Professional Series. I've got a gold. This was not part of her palette color, but I really wanted a metallic. Ah, let me do it this way. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to get this in focus. There's the gold. And then I've got a Cotman Mauve. This color is actually really pretty. And I've got a Winsor & Newton 
Cadmium, no, Scarlet Lake. Um, from that, and then I've got the Cadmium Red, I do believe, which is Cotman, from Windsor & Newton. And I have the Shell Pink by Holbein. I do like how Holbein does their labeling. I think out of all the ones that I just showed you, they do their labeling the best where you can actually see what the pigments are and the opacity and the light fastness on their labels. They do a really good job of that, probably better than anybody I've seen so far. Other than, I did just get some stuff from Jackson's, and they do a pretty good job on their labeling too as far as what is the pigmentation and the light fastness and the opacity. So those are those paints that I got. I put those in this bag so that I can always refill up the palette for Carrie's classes. I think she tends to favor these colors quite a bit, and I've got more than one class with her coming up. That's the watercolor misfit. So those are those. And then I bought um, some Faber Castell Polychromos pencils, and I got this case from Amazon. But it's a hard shell case, so it's great for travel. I can just take this with me to the coffee shop. And so I just got some of the um, colors from from them. So there's those. And the polychromos colors are highly recommended if you like to do botanical illustration. And then I've got some, I got another small global arts case out of Blick. And I like these because they zip around and they're really compact, they're really thin. And I've got just a few of the Faber Castell Albert Dirch, Durek. Doric, I think. I don't know how to pronounce my German words very well, but these are just watercolor pencils. Um, color pencils, I'm sorry, just straight up color pencils. And these are actually really gorgeous. I have Karen Dosh right now for watercolor pencils, and I'm trying to kill through those before I kind of jump over to Faber Castell, but that is pretty much um, what I'm using right now. I also wanted to mention one other piece of equipment that I did buy that I think everybody should get. When it comes to pencil sharpeners, I had one of the old-fashioned kind that you used to use for your number two pencils to um, fasten to the wall um, at school. For the and then I went out and I bought an electric pencil, and I bought this one off of Amazon. And I liked it because it was electric, but it only has this size hole in it. And even though it says it can fit different sizes, it really doesn't. And this thing kind of broke within like, I would say two weeks. So if you see this one on Amazon, don't get it. Do not get this one. It will break. What I would recommend that you get is the Carl Earl pencil sharpener. Thanks to Wendy Hollander again, she recommended this. This thing is fantastic at providing a really sharp point on a pencil. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than like the cheap mechanical ones, but guys look at the points that you're getting on these pencils. I mean, that's what you want, you know? That's what you want when you're actually sharpening um, your pencils up. Let me just get this in focus. You want a really sharp point on a really long one. And it just does a really wonderful job of doing that. So. I actually highly recommend that if you're looking for a pencil sharpener to get this one again. This is not sponsored. I just really love this sharpener. I just think it's really the best thing since light spread. And if it does get jammed, um, the back in here comes apart really easy for you to um, basically fix it. And you can just knock out whatever is jammed into your... Um, your pencil sharpener and I had a jam yesterday and it just fell right out so if you get get a chance get this Carl Engel let me just put this into focus Carl Engel 5 pencil sharpener it's fantastic all right guys um, this is that's all I have I hope that this has prov provided some helpful information for you if you're looking for um, any of the supplies if you have any comments below or recommendations let me know. Please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I'm trying to put stuff out as regularly as possible. Um, hit that notification bell so that that'll help me out and let me know that you're interested in the content. Sorry I was kind of all over the place. I kind of changed my setup at the last minute today. 
and I got a broken finger, so this is not really helping me maneuver around. But I hope that that's a good, solid review of all the art supplies that I have for 2019. Otherwise, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye! Hey YouTube, what's up? It's Lisa here. I forgot the other part of why I actually was trying to do an art haul unboxing. I have been looking high and low for a art bag for a while to take with me to coffee shops. And I got this bag off of Amazon. It's a Kaweco bag. Um, I'll put the link below in the description. I, I got this bag about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. And I just wanted to walk you through it. It's a great bag. It's a sling bag. I was looking for something that was going to be big enough for it to take my um, iPad and some books with me. I'm going to just show you what a little bit of the peek inside looks like. Um, and also take some watercolor and uh, art supplies and just kind of like hang out, especially with the fall coming out in um, stores and stuff or, I mean, coffee shops and everything like that. So I'm going to walk you through the Kuwaiko bag here really quick. Okay, so first of all, the detail on this bag is kind of crazy. These are like leather buckles and straps. I really like these. They're magnetic um, clips, and they clip very well. And once you're in it, you have a little front pouch here, so it's pretty deep. Right now I've got like backup coffee supplies, my trivia and my sweetener for my coffee. Then there's a um, front pocket here, which is pretty deep. And I tend to keep, you know, my credentials for my job and office keys. I have some speed beans. Uh, these are great for um, if I get sluggish during the day. I usually take those. That's about all I carry in that front section. Put that stuff back in there so I don't lose that. And I tend to carry this on a Friday too when I want to like not carry my regular commuter carry bag. On the side is this little pouch. I will say the one drawback about this is it's not deep enough to hold. I have an iPhone 7 Plus. It's not quite deep enough. Excuse me. It's not quite deep enough to hold that. I can stick it in the side, but um, I really don't feel like getting picked or anything like that. I'm if I'm getting. If I'm going in the car, it's fine, but it, like, it won't really flap over and secure that way. So that's the one drawback about the bag. On the inside, this thing is very spacious. Um, let me just flap these down so they don't go flapping around. On the inside of this bag, I'm sorry, I'm moving around here because I'm trying to make sure you guys can see the inside. It holds a lot of stuff. So the interior's got two, two inside pockets, keep a little tight stick in there, and I normally carry lip gloss uh, that I'm wearing, and then on this side I actually put my eyeglass case into this pocket right here, it's big enough for that. Then I have a couple of um, book, you know, notebooks that I take with me, and then I have Right now I'm looking at Alfonso Dunn's book on drawing and pen and ink. Get ready for Inktober, guys. Get that going. And then it has to be able to fit my iPad Pro 12.9 inch with the keyboard case on it. Um, great for like being in a, a coffee shop and for reference. Um, so there's that um, going on there. Like that, so I put that in there. Um, and then, if I'm not carrying that one, sometimes I take my iPad Mini, which of course, if it can fit, fit the Pro, it can fit the Mini, and then my makeup bag. So this bag has been really great. Um, I can also just take my iPad Mini and throw in the camera that I'm shooting with. It has a internal pocket here. If you guys can really see that. But it has an internal pocket here as well. Um, it is a sling back, so you've got to be mindful of the weight. And it does also have this hidden zipper back here. So if you want to stick your wallet so it's against you and not out in one of the front pockets, you can do so. The great bag. I really like it. It's, it's 
looking like it's pretty durable. It's holding up fairly well. Um, like I said, you just got to be mindful of the weight. I will say, ladies, I'm kind of on the short side. The back is a little long. Um, it tends to hit me right where like your buckle would be for your waist. So you got to do some adjusting when you're like carrying it because this strap doesn't adjust up very well or a lot. It doesn't adjust up a lot. It's really kind of made, I think, for a guy. Um, men should love this bag. Women, um, they have various colors. They have a red, a blue. I've tightened it up and cinched it up about as much as it can go. But I really do like carrying it. It is actually, it holds weight really well, other than the fact that it's just a tiny, tiny bit long for me. Um, I wish it was a little bit shorter. I mean, shorter in um, length, but not by much, because otherwise it wouldn't fit my iPad Pro. But you guys, this is the review of the bag. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Let me know what you think about the bag. If you've got an art bag that you're using to carry around and go to coffee shops, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye.